Greetings Commanders, this is Kree Kree here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you a beginner combat Viper Mark III. This will include the build obviously, the fire groups, the power priority and also this baby in action with some added tips as well so make sure that you stay tuned for that. Now just before we get into the video if you ever want to catch me live or play Elite Dangerous with me you can go to my Twitch channel, which is creecree.tv forward slash creecree, or join the Discord. You can also follow my socials, they're all linked in the description below. Now, without further ado, let's get into the build. Okay, now to start off with, we're going to start with the hard points. So, with this Viper, there are two medium and two small hard points. In the mediums, I have put in the multi cannons. So multi cannons are good for kinetic damage. That is good for taking down the hull of your opponents. Now in the small slots, we do have two pulse lasers. They are thermal damage, so they are good for taking down the shields before you attack the hull. I mean, you can fire them both at the same time. That is completely up to you. Now, one thing to notice is that with all of these weapons, they are all gimbaled. So that means that it will essentially help target your opponent but when they use their chaff launcher it does scramble your gimbaled weapons which is what these are so if you want to keep firing you'll just have to stop targeting your enemy and then just shoot straight forward now next is the utility mounts so there are only two slots uh, I have decided to go with a chaff launcher for yourself so that way if your enemy has any gimbaled weapons it will scramble their aim. And for the next one we've got the shield booster. I've gone with a C which gives you a shield boost of 12%. I haven't gone with A because of the power limit that the ship has uh, but any shield booster is better than no shield booster so that's why I've popped it on. If you choose to put on something else, say for example a heat sink or another chaff launcher or maybe even a point defense turret that is completely up to you. But because of the power limitations, uh, there is some power priority that you'll need to consider which I will get into a bit later. Next is the core internal. So here is where you will find the power plant, thrusters, everything that every other ship has. So with these, the grade that I've gone with is almost all A. This is because A is the best you can get for what it's capable of as well as the weight. Because you'll notice that, uh, for example, with the sensors down here, this is a D class. D class is always the lightest module that you could go for. Now going up to the top here, for the hull, I've gone with military grade composite, A obviously. So this will give you a hull boost of 250%. You do have slightly less uh, kinetic resistance, which is a negative 20%, and then explosive resistance is negative 40. Thermal resistance is zero. With that in mind, this is where you would be thinking about your shields, but we'll get into that in the optionals. Next is the power plant. So this is 3A, so this is the very best that you can get because it gives you the most power capacity as well as being one of the lightest that you get for the power capacity that it has. As I was saying earlier, D is the lightest, but then you do lose out on other stats though, so you need to keep that in mind when you're building your ship. Next is the thrusters. So I've gone with 3A here as well because I want to make sure that I am able to be as maneuverable as possible, especially around larger ships because their ability to turn around is far worse compared to a smaller ship. So we want to be as nimble as we can to get around to the backside of the ships when we're shooting them. This is the frame shift drive, so I've gone with 3A here, mostly because you just want to make sure you have the best jump range uh, when you're going between systems, just so you can get there a bit faster. Next is the life support, so I've gone with 2A. Uh, mostly this is because of the emergency life support time. So if your canopy breaks, then you will have 25 minutes, that's what this is here, 
of life support air in your ship. So if you were to go with obviously smaller classes like B, C and D, the time is obviously going to be smaller. And with having an extra 25 minutes, that gives you plenty of time to kill your opponent and then get to a station and repair and rearm. Next is the power distributor. So this, I've gone with a 3A as well. Uh, this is because I want the best weapons, engines and systems capacity and recharge. Because we want to be able to swap between using our pips in our engines, systems and weapons quickly without having to worry about having a slow recharge on the ability to use those particular things. Next is the sensors. I've gone with a 3D because it does save you on weight like I have mentioned before and even though that the range and angle that you're able to target your enemies is smaller than say a C, B or A it doesn't particularly matter because of how nimble you would be compared to a larger ship and you'll be right behind them up their butts anyway. Now on to optional internals. So this is where you'll see obviously where the shield generator is uh, and I've put in some hull and module reinforcements so I'll go through them. So for the first one is a 3A shield generator because I want to have the most mana shields as I possibly can without having to get into doing any kind of like engineering or uh, power play for having larger amount of protection from damages that another ship could cause to my ship. Do keep in mind that when the shield does go down and completely off, uh, it does take a bit longer for it to recharge compared to a biweave shield generator. That is because the biweave shield generator has less of a shield strength than what the 3A does. Now for most of these, as I was saying, uh, there will be hull reinforcements and module reinforcements. So you've noticed that these are D sized. Uh, that's only because you can only get like, I think it's a D or an E. I believe if I'm remembering correctly so it doesn't actually apply when it comes to trying to get an A or a B or a C because they don't exist. We want to have as many of these hull reinforcement packages because that will help with any kind of resistance from kinetic thermal and explosive attacks on your ship. So and these obviously will stack. Now for the module reinforcement packages, as opposed to the hull reinforcement, obviously that is specific for your hull, the module ones are specific for your modules. Because what you can do is that you can sub-target an enemy's particular module. So for example, their power plant or their frame shift drive. So if you've got some module reinforcements that gives your modules that bit of extra protection if your enemy chooses to sub-target any of your modules. Now for the last one here, the advanced docking computer, you can have this if you like. It depends on how confident you are with your uh, landing and taking off. Uh, but if you feel that you're perfectly fine, then feel free to add something else. I personally would add another module reinforcement package. Now here is your fire groups. So these are basically how you want to choose your primary and secondary fire depending on whether you are in combat or analysis mode. So for this you'll most likely be in combat mode because obviously that makes sense. Now I've just put it all on the one fire group that being A and I've chosen to have my pulse lasers on my primary so that is number one and my multi cannons on my secondary. So that way I can choose whether I want to fire one at a time or both. Now for chaff, you'll notice that I don't have a fire group button assigned, whether that be primary or secondary, because it is a keybind that you can use. That way you don't have to worry about firing off your chaff whilst shooting or having to switch between different fire groups when you're in the middle of a fight. Now as for the data link scanner, composition scanner and discovery scanner, they are all in the same fire group, but they won't fire off. Either you have to be very close 
to a ship so that would be for the uh, data link scanner uh, but for the others you will need to be in analysis mode for them to work so because this is a combat ship you're not likely to use that now back on the outfitting screen you'll see the retracted and deployed this is the power that i was talking about earlier so you can see when it's retracted we use 10.04 megawatts but when the hard points are deployed it uses 12.10 megawatts but the total power that we have is 12 megawatts so once everything is deployed it will be slightly over which means something will shut down so to combat that and so we can choose what shuts down and what doesn't we use power priority on this page here modules on your fourth panel next to fire groups this is where you will sort out your power priority for your build so you can see down the bottom where it says output and usage output being 100 percent always and usage being what is actually being used and then on the far right you'll see priority next to health and then power type etc so this is where you would choose the power priority you'll see that where it says usage it only has one that means everything is on priority one and the only reason why i can do that and even though usage is 95 is that because i have gone into cargo hatch because we're not using that and i've made it inactive so that means that because that is inactive, when I bring out my hard points, none of my other modules will be affected because the cargo hatch that I will not be using is turned off. So just a tip about power priority. When you're choosing what modules go off and on, depending on whether the hard points are out, power priority number one means that that is going to be something that you use all the time. So obviously that would be something like your thrusters, your life support, the shield generator, that kind of thing. And then you go two, three, four, and up to five. So you'll be able to see what will shut down in what order. So number five, four, three, or two. Now enough about the build. I'm gonna show you how this baby works in action. I'll be taking it to a high resource extraction site at the system LHS317. And I will be also including some tips that will help you make extra money when you're killing pirates. Okay, now just before we go off and kill pirates, what I'm going to do to help me make extra credits, I will be going to the nearby system, LP908-11, to go to the main station there and pick up some missions to kill a certain clan and then while i am at the high res i'll be able to spot them they'll say it's a mission target and i can get earn extra credits on top of the bounties that i'll be getting from killing those pirates so let's go ahead and do that so once i get to the high res i will be killing pirates for an hour and with those missions we'll be able to see how much i make and so you can see that it's actually viable for you to kill pirates without having an engineered ship let's see how much cash i make And now it's time to hand in our bounties. So where you can go to do that is you go into the admin section of your contacts and then you go down to bounties which will be found in the middle there. And as you can see we made about six to seven million credits. Now as for your missions you can find them in your left hand panel for your navigation under transactions and there's where you can find all your missions and where to hand them in. Now, as you can see, I do have a wing mission here, which you can do on your own, but you can also do it with your friends. And if you're looking for anyone that you want to play Elite Dangerous with, you can always join the Discord. There's always plenty of people to hang out with. If you like this video, you can always find more here in my Ship Builds playlist. Fly safe, Commanders. No sevens.